This event took place before Genesis 1, the creation of the sons of God. Genesis chapter 6, verses 1 through 4 in the book of Job captivate many Bible readers because of the mysterious identity of both the sons of God and the Nephilim. In this Bible story from the book of Job, there is a wealthy man named Job residing in an area called Uz with his extended family and vast flocks. He is blameless and upright, always striving to live a moral life. He had a very disciplined relationship with God. Job loses all that he has. The suffering shows too much for Job, and he turns bitter, anxious, and scared. Job wants to face God and protest. Eventually, God steps in. Thirty-six times, Job asked God to speak with him. He has now received his wish. Job chapter 38 verses 4 through 7 Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who set its measurements, since you know? Or who stretched the measuring line over it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy? We read, When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. It is revealed that angelic beings referred to as morning stars and sons of God, witnessed the creation of the earth and celebrated the glory, power, and wisdom of God involved in the process. Fallen angels are rarely mentioned in the Bible, since the vast majority of angels in heaven have never fallen from grace and gone to the dark side. Some, however, chose to do so. The fallen angels did not keep their beginning, which means they did not follow the path that they were created on. The angels were created to be in heaven with God, praising Him and doing His bidding. They, like humans, were created to glorify Him, but humans were created to live on earth, not angels. Nonetheless, these angels left their beginning or their starting point in heaven. They chose to reject God's plan for their lives by exercising their free will. According to the Bible, these angels are fallen angels because they left heaven. What happened to these angels? According to the Bible, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but cast them into hell and committed them to pits of darkness, held for judgment. The leader of these angels is Satan, who transforms himself to an angel of light. The devil plotted against God, his maker, and he and the angels who followed him lost the battle. What happens after the fallen angels leave heaven? According to Matthew chapter 25, verse 41, the everlasting fire, hell, was prepared for the devil and his angels. In other words, hell was never intended for a single person, though Judas and others will undoubtedly end up there. In the end, Satan and the fallen angels were the intended recipients of hell. Hell was created in heaven, as a final punishment for the leaders of the Great Rebellion, but the Lord allows others in the nations He judges to go there as well because of choice, free will, and man's God-given responsibility to choose his eternal destination, whether heaven or hell. And it is hell that Satan and the fallen angels, the one-third of those who rebelled alongside him, will go to at the end of all things. God will exact His wrath on those who have rebelled against Him, 
and Satan and the fallen angels will not escape unscathed. We've seen here that fallen angels exist, even though fallen from grace is a difficult concept for some of us to grasp. We'd like to believe that angels can fall, but biblical history proves otherwise. The fallen angels are known to be one-third of the angelic host that follows Satan in the Great Rebellion and attempts to overthrow God and his throne and reign to take over heaven. We also know that the attempt was a colossal failure and that Satan and his rebellious angels were expelled from heaven. Some fallen angels who are now in hell and others who are on earth go their separate ways. According to Genesis 6, fallen angels intermarry with humans and bear giant children by human women. Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 through 4. Now it happened, when men began to multiply in the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were beautiful and desirable. And they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose and desired. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive and remain with man forever, because he is indeed flesh, sinful, corrupt, given over to sensual appetites. Nevertheless, his days shall yet be a hundred and twenty years. There were Nephilim, men of stature, notorious men, on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God lived with the daughters of men, and they gave birth to their children. These were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown, great reputation, fame. The Bible says, And they took wives for themselves of all whom they chose. We can deduce why Satan sent his angels to intermarry with human women, directly or indirectly. Satan attempted to pollute mankind's genetic pool with satanic corruption, planting something resembling a genetic pathogen in order to render the human race unfit to bear the seed of the woman, the Messiah, promised in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15. But who were these sons of God? Both pre-Christian Judaism and the early church held that the sons of God were spirit beings or angels who took human wives and gave birth to giants known as the Nephilim. The three main perspectives on the identity of God's sons are as follows. Number one, they were fallen angels. Second, they were powerful human rulers. Or third, they were godly descendants of Seth intermarrying with wicked descendants of Cain. The traditional belief is that the sons of God were supernatural beings who had children with human women, resulting in the Nephilim. Here are the reasons supporting this view. The fact that the phrase sons of God always refers to angels in the Old Testament lends support. Job chapter 1 verse 6 now there was a day when the sons of God, angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan, adversary, accuser, also came among them. Job chapter 2 verse 1 Again, there was a day when the sons of God, angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan, adversary, accuser, also came among them to present himself before the Lord. Job chapter 38 verse 7 When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God, angels, shouted for joy. In all three cases, the sons of God are spirit angelic beings, including Satan. The phrase's use in Job suggests that Genesis 6 is referring to spirits, angels. 
Genesis chapter 6 verses 1 through 2 contrasts the sons of God with man, implying that these are non-human beings. Genesis chapter 6 verse 1 says that man began to multiply and daughters were born to them. The Hebrew word for man is the generic term for mankind as used in Genesis chapter 5 verses 1 through 2. The sons of God are contrasted with man. Thus, the sons of God were distinct from man and married all mankind's daughters. As a result, the sons of God must be non-human beings of some kind. The context implies that the Nephilim were the resulting offspring of spirit beings and humans. The Nephilim, or fallen ones in Genesis chapter 6 verse 4, are mysterious personalities, the mighty men who were of old, the men of renown. The text does not explain how the Nephilim arrived. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward when the sons of God came into the daughters of man and bore children to them, it simply states, but why are the Nephilim mentioned in Genesis 6 alongside the intermarriage of the sons of God and daughters of man? It is unclear how these mighty men of renown came about if they were not the outcome of intermarriage between spirit beings and humans.